With the spotlight on the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, a simmering conflict between two other former Soviet republics is being largely ignored. The conflict is over the mountainous region of Artsakh, also called Nagorno-Karabakh, an enclave in the South Caucasus about the same size as Luxembourg. Christian Armenians have inhabited the land since the 5th century BC and continue to be the overwhelming majority, but it was arbitrarily given by Stalin to Azerbaijan in 1921. This laid the groundwork for decades of conflict and two major wars, including a 44-day war in the fall of 2020 that caused thousands of deaths and handed a decisive defeat to Armenia. In September 2022, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Pakistan launched the Three Brothers Joint Military Exercise then, a few days later, Azerbaijan attacked sovereign Armenia, beginning a new chapter of the conflict. Shortly after, on the 12th of December, Azerbaijan blocked the Lachlan Corridor, the only road connecting Artsakh with Armenia, a road that supplied 400 tons of supplies a year to the more than 120,000 Armenians living in Artsakh. Now approaching six months, this blockade has caused a humanitarian crisis by depriving many residents, women, children, and the elderly, of medical supplies, fresh fruits, vegetables, and utilities including electricity, gas, and internet service. International organizations including Amnesty International and Freedom House have called on Azerbaijan to lift the blockade, and others have warned of potential ethnic cleansing of the native Armenian population. Nagorno-Karabakh is people, and it is 120,000 Armenian population, which has been there on their ancestral land for, for always, and uh, which are now pressured and the serious challenge and serious danger of, uh, you know, direct actual perpetration of ethnic cleansing for Azerbaijan, given the policies they conduct, given the attitude, the rhetoric, the aggressiveness uh, uh, that uh, we observe on the daily basis, uh, the outright purpose is to have a situation in which there is uh, no Nagorno-Karabakh, there is no problem kind of approach, you see. It is packed in a sort of a misleading action of uh, some protesters, but obviously those are government-sponsored sponsored agents who have blocked the only road linking Nagorno-Karabakh with Armenia. And as you know, Azerbaijan has been uh, considerably supported by its ally Turkey, also used mercenaries brought in uh, the ISIS-style mercenaries. There was, uh, there was a, a subversive operation uh, by the Azeri uh, armed forces, which resulted in the death of three Armenian uh, uh, persons uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh. And again, of course, the questions arise, uh, questions arise about the uh, function and, 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 and uh, the presence of Russian peacekeepers and the way in which they are delivering uh, their, uh, on their mandate. Azerbaijan is a dynastic dictatorship, dynastic you know, uh, dictatorship of one family which has been ruling the country uh, for about 50 plus years. Being from the West, we're not used to, you know, the type of situation that I see today where when you, you know, walk into a, a supermarket, a grocery store, you have very select items. Um, and there's times that you have no items. Uh, things like fresh fruit, vegetables, um, and that sort of stuff has been in very, very short supply here. Um, and it's especially disheartening for uh, people that are, you know, uh, when you're talking about infants, when you're talking about elderly, you, when you're talking about people that need the, you know, right type of uh, supplementary, uh, you know, food needs. Everybody here is on a rationing system. They include long-term perishable fruits. So it's like macaroni, beans, rice, things that can maintain for a long time. It is nothing close to normal. It's nothing close to what was normal here. Uh, when you're talking about 400 tons of goods a day to, you know, a, a couple of tons uh, a week, there's this really big disparity between what was and what is. So you have like these three layers of effects. You have uh, people not being able to cook, people not being able to heat their homes, especially considering the fact that most of this blockade was done in the winter months. Uh, and then you have transportation coming to a certain halt. Um, so it has a very, very strong effect on the population and society here uh, to take as much as they can. 
Uh, I think it is the ethnic cleansing, first and foremost, of the population here in Artsakh. Doesn't sound very, you know, um, uh, persuasive in that an Armenian can enjoy any rights uh, uh, in Azerbaijan. So that, you know, the policy of uh, um, resolving the Nagorno-Karabakh question in a way that there are no Armenians there, therefore there is no problem, uh, is a very serious threat and a very uh, you know, visible objective. As world leaders meet in attempts to negotiate peace and borders, the fate of 120,000 people is up in the air. The blockade continues.